and I came up with this. Let me show you its features. Hi, it's Todd with Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today this is sort of like the second part of the Instant Legolas Medieval Assist Challenge. For those of you who've been following this series of films, Jorg Sprav has made this wonderfully interesting object, the Instant Legolas, a magazine feeding device for a longbow. So it turns a longbow into a fast shooting weapon, a really fast shooting weapon. He asked me if I could have a look at making a medieval version of it. So I've done that, that's in, in other films. But as part of that, I had to look at the assist system that Jorg had fitted to the front. So it's not on here now, but the concept is that as you draw this back, it feeds some power into the system that allows you to pull a heavier bow than you otherwise would. It's a great idea. And in its simplest form, it's really simple. You just put another bow the other way so that you push it forward there and it loads the bow and it pushes back against you as you draw and it adds in. Look at the first film if this is new to you. If this is new to you, then goodness sake, go look at the first film because this will be gibberish. But I think it's got a fundamental flaw. You're pushing and loading your other bow and you're pushing, pushing, pushing. Basically, you want that power to be feeding in just as you're drawing this one back and you need that extra power. It feeds a bit of the power back to you. So the concept is that it removes some draw weight off your bow. It, it makes it easier to pull this and it does. But to make it easier to pull it, you have to put a load of work in, which is effectively just thrown away. And for me, that didn't feel quite right. So we looked at the medieval assist challenge and I looked at it and I thought, right, I'm going to crack this. And as I said in the film, it all worked in my head beautifully. My idea was fantastic. It was, it was flawless, brilliant. And then I made it and it didn't work. So I said, look, come on, there's half a million of you or whatever. You come up with your ideas. There's some really interesting stuff that you guys have done. And thank you so much for taking the time to make those models and make those films and put them up because they're really enlightening. And what was good about it is I saw some really good inventiveness and I love inventiveness because oh, 15 years ago now, I used to be a staff engineer on Scrappy Challenge, which if you're American is Junkyard Wars. And every day was all about crazy, stupid inventiveness building stuff. And this was just, it sort of took me back a bit. It's like a time machine. It was great. And I've looked at as many of us as I can. I've commented on some, I've sort of looked at them. And there's two, which I think if you combine them, become really interesting. As you would expect, there were sort of themes, really, in the comments that were made. So there was quite a lot of, we'll just use a Mongol bow, a horn and sinew bow, they can draw to 36 inches or something. Yeah, I get that, but partly it's not really primary European technology at the time. But the other thing is that it doesn't solve that bringing the draw weight in when you want it side of things. A lot of you came up with things which weren't bow related as such, and there was some really clever stuff in there and I just, I just love it. And I'm going to show you clips as we go. And these are some of the ones which I don't think any of them at the beginning here are the answer, but they are interesting. Now, the first theme that came through strongly for me were sort of basically reworkings of my idea. Now, actually, unfortunately, I think my original idea, had I looked at it and thought, well, this is probably going to weigh two kilos. If I had just stood there and stretched out my arm with two kilos in the end of it and thought, can that work for me? Actually, I would have saved myself six hours of making something and it would have just fallen that hurdle. There's a good lesson in design there. I forgot that. So, uh, Fiup Kassa effectively takes my design and he does the pickup on the lever arms into the middle of the spring, not onto the outside. And what that means is that the spring is not sort of balanced on a knife edge like my system was. And so you get a much more reliable draw off it. So that's actually a great reinterpretation of what I did. But I suspect actually that the weight on it would be too much and that would therefore just make the whole thing just, just pointless. You wouldn't be able to handle it. So uh, Fiat Casa, great stuff, but for me, didn't crack it. The next up of the themes that came through again and again was to use a single arm, because if you use a single arm, of course, you haven't got those unbalancing issues. If it was a bow, so, so something that has to move very quickly, then of course a single arm's not going to work. But this is not the quick part of this device. It is a slow feeding in of power. So in theory, the single arm device works. And Scott McDivitt came up with a, a really simple solution to this, where you have one fixed arm and you have a cord with a sliding point on it on the centre rod and then going down to one rotating arm. So it's a really nice simple idea and he was one of the first to do it. My gut feeling, well 
back to the weight issue but my gut feeling actually is that you will always end up with some sort of slight imbalance in that system and the central rod that comes out of the instant legolas will inevitably end up getting bent and to resist that you would need to make it bigger and if you make it bigger you make it heavier and then we are all back at the beginning again so scott's idea is a nice simplification of what i've done but again actually i don't know but my gut reaction is it's not going to work either the next of the major themes to come through was to join the arms with some sort of a gear system and there was some really clever stuff with sort of weird sort of helical formed gears which i just felt were not medieval enough but if you just do a straight gear on these two arms of course it then just locks the arms together they can't act independently as mine were doing but that adds weight and mass you know and complexity so um bose einstein bose einstein shake great names you've got great names out there came out with a great one where you link the two arms with cords so it's like a beautifully simple solution a really medieval solution and lightweight because they're just cords but you're still left with the whole mass of the system that i originally did so it's another sort of development of mine i get where he's coming from a really nice little idea with it i you know that's tasty but again it just doesn't solve what effectively i built which was effectively a failure it's too heavy it, it, it just can't ever be useful so then we're left with some really sort of like off the wall stuff like, like, like one off things where I just look at it and go I've never seen anything like that before love it um, Paul Freeman did one I'll show you this now where it's it's kind of like an inside out bow I don't really know how to even describe it with a push rod up the middle but it's got a really interesting set of dynamics on it he put some scales on it really interesting set of dynamics on how that bow works and it's without a doubt uh, getting very close to what we want and possibly even actually achieves it I think if I give a winning mark to any of these that I see here as a finished concept which is just about close enough I think Paul Freeman's probably nails it actually another lovely solution by Pear Reed yeah it's just it's just really clever but I think from my experience of building the medieval instant Legolas is Pear Reed's one involves slides and slides are a difficult thing to achieve in a medieval world really easy now with bearings and tracks but actually then I think to get something reliable and low friction tricky so for me Pear Reed's one clever like properly clever but I think probably wouldn't work Doug Adams and Adam Virtue, I, I don't know if they worked as a team or what, but they came up with an interesting sort of compound pulley sliding track system thing, which definitely has some legs in it. And I just love the fact that it's completely different to everybody else's. But again, it comes back to that sliding track issue. I just don't think that it would be reliably achievable in the medieval world. So you could do it on paper, Leonardo could sketch it all down and, and he could see it. But actually when it comes to delivering it, bow after bow, I just don't think it would be possible. But nice stuff, guys. And again, on. On the unique side of things, Golan Cohen has come up with, again, a lovely one here where you, you have a bow and it looks like a kind of a fairly ordinary bow. Instead of having the string knocked at the end of the bow limb, they sort of slide up the bow limbs during the process. Now, you could probably do that with a little wheeled carriage. That's quite medieval. They could do that. They certainly had pulleys and wheels and things. And again, it wouldn't and couldn't work as a dynamic shooting bow, but as an energy source, then it can. I'm not quite sure on what the the bending pro or the spring force profiles would be on that but there is certainly something very interesting in it and i love the little abstract thought to get there it's really nice so um go now, a real cracker on that one but then we get to torsion now i dismiss torsion and I, i've built um a catapulter a roman roman catapulter spear thrower and the torsion device and the forces tied up in it and the timbers required to resist the breaking of it and the steel reinforcement are massive you know it, it was like torsion enters my head gets thrown out like that because the mass is going to be too much even before I thought about mass being an issue so I dropped torsion as a possible but then parabellum arms came in uh, nice channel by the way I've not seen you before but sort of like rubber band guns like you haven't seen before go check it out actually it's very cool really nice idea so that is very similar to Golal's idea with sort of a sliding knock on, a, on an arm actually so so the two are sort of quite comparable in many ways but it uses a torsion device but quite a single arm not necessarily very heavy but again it was the idea of the sliding knock that really excited me so I think that would probably be too heavy as a torsion device so sorry Parabellum arms but I think that one probably won't crack it and now we get to the beginning of the end of this story it's a version of torsion two versions of torsion that i've not come across and both are really clever but both are different now the first one that i came across and i thought yes that is good 
really good was Spencer Cutting. And he's done this one here. Now what we saw, of course, was a parallel sided drum with a cord wrapped around it. Now as you pull that cord, it creates a spring force. It twists the drum and twists the cords. It gives you a returning force on that cord. That's nice, but it will give you a fairly traditional kind of a spring profile that it starts gently and it gets harder. So that was definitely not going to be the answer. And then we get Valhelm, where he uses a rotating drum again, but one with a, an expanding, differing radius on the drum. And he also uses a spring, a leaf spring. So again, all beautifully medieval technology, both of those two would have cracked it in a way. But I think that with Valhelm's one, again, the spring would have to be really quite heavy for that to make it work. And so I thought about combining the two. And I came up with this. Let me show you its features. <laughs> I just had to do that again, didn't I? These are ash, two spring arms. They do move in, but they are stiff and they are short. And they're deliberately stiff and short, so they're strong, but they're also fairly light for the spring you get. We then get a wound cord here, and we get a winding drum, but it has a spiral groove around it, like a snail shell. Now, what that means, as I pull this at the beginning, the drum winds. Now at the beginning of the travel, the leverage, the distance between the outer diameter of the drum and the cords is quite small. So it gives a very powerful force for returning or rotating that drum back around and therefore pulling the string. But these springs are quite slack at that point. Now as I pull it out, I wind those springs in. I don't, can you see them moving? Oh, a little bit maybe. So as I pull that cord, those springs come in and of course the tension on this whole system goes up and the drum wants to unwind more. But now that my cord is on the outside of the drum on a bigger radius, it's not pulling back as hard as it could be because that leverage is bigger. If I'd done it on a parallel one, like Spencer's original one, then as I pull the cord, it goes up in weight. This one does go up in weight. I haven't got it quite right, but hopefully you understand what I'm getting at here. The thing is, this is actually really quite tricky. I mean, very tricky. And nowadays on a CAD system, yeah, go out there and do it, guys. It's probably relatively easy to work out. But the thing is, there is a relationship between those diameters there, the distance these cords are apart, the diameter of those cords, the spring weight here, the actual weight of it, the amount that it changes as you're rotating this. There are a lot of different factors. Now, all of those could be worked out in the medieval world. They could be worked out by me in the workshop now. I could do it to try and maximize this and get it to perform how I wanted it. But it will take a lot of models to nail it down. That's the sort of thing that they used to do in the medieval world. You could just do it again and again and again because you've got apprentices on cheap labor. You just get them to make 50 of them. If that's what's needed. I haven't got the time now, so I am not going to be able to really crack it. But I think that this answers pretty much all of my questions. It's medieval technology. They had these sort of stepped pulleys on cranes and things. This is just standard kind of like torsion technology. These springs, yeah, I mean, they didn't use torsion technology like that, but they'd certainly understand all of that. So this is really basic stuff for a medieval person. It's compact, it is relatively lightweight, it's powerful. It allows you to bring your draw weight assist in at different points at different loads. I haven't completely nailed it, so I can't tell you that this is the answer. I mean, there are gonna be many answers anyway, but I do think that this would fulfill it. But it's not just my design. I didn't get here on my own. I got here because of all of you guys. And actually, so often design is that collaborative process. And if I just stand here and I cut those guys out and I just said, well, this is what I came up with, you know, brilliant, isn't it? Lovely, great. Well, you know what? Not only is it a disservice to Valhelm um, and to Spencer, it's also a complete lie. So guys, thank you so much because you really put work into all your little films. And I tried to look at as many as I could. There were a lot and it's been great and a fantastic journey for me. And Jörg, thank you for feeding this thing to me and, and let me go on this journey. It has been really interesting. So thanks and bye bye. <laughs>